Biodiversity is defined as the variety of life in the, in the world or in a particular habitat or ecosystem, and it's more important than most people realize. Do you know what this is? Sounds like a pretty simple question, right? Of course you know what this is, but your children might not, because the fact is that between 0.01 and 0.1% of all species on Earth are going extinct each year. This may not seem like a lot, but with 8.7 million different species, even if that lower estimate of 0.01% is true, that still equates to 87,000 extinctions annually. 87,000? Are you kidding me? These extinctions occur across the globe, from ecosystems ranging from deserts to rainforests. Now look, there is a natural extinction rate that has been in effect for millions of years, but scientists agree that human activity is the main contributing factor to an extinction rate that is over 1,000 times greater than the natural extinction rate. Believe it or not, humans are species too, just like cats, dogs, and this bony-eared ass fish. This means that we too are affected by the loss of biodiversity on our planet, considering that we rely on it for food, water, and medicine. Biologically diverse ecosystems also provide us with services, such as climate stabilization, decomposition, and pollination. Seeing as how much we benefit from biodiversity, it's a shame that we don't do more to preserve it. Before we talk about how to solve this problem, let's go through some of the reasons why this is even a problem in the first place, starting with an obvious one, pollution. Over the past 200 years, we have force-fed our atmosphere 1,300 gigatons of carbon dioxide, 500 of which have been absorbed by our oceans. Last time I checked, fish breathe oxygen from water molecules, not carbonic acid. Carbon dioxide emissions lead to so many issues, and many of them stem from a lack of biodiversity. Moving on to introduce species. When we take a species out of its natural habitat and put it into an unfamiliar ecosystem, many issues can be caused. For starters, the species being introduced may bring diseases with it that the native species are not accustomed to. Also, the ecosystem may not have any natural predators to control the population of the introduced species, making them invasive. On the surface, introducing a species into a new environment may seem like a great idea, but sustainable biodiversity is a lot more complicated than that. The last main cause responsible for the loss of biodiversity is overharvesting. When you hear that word, you probably think of plants, but it applies to animals as well. Take the fishing industry, for example. According to the United Nations, one-third of the world's fisheries are being pushed beyond their biological limits, meaning that fish are being caught and killed at an unsustainable rate. Municipalities put fishing restrictions in place for a reason, but nobody seems to care. In going through the causes of this issue, you may have noticed that what's common among all of them is us, humans. We are responsible for our own loss of biodiversity, one of many things that we cannot live without. In fact, this has become so much of a concern that in 2008, a global seed vault was built in Arctic Norway in fear of mass extinction of plant species. That's right, the Norwegian government has so little faith in the world's ability to preserve its own biodiversity that they built a seed vault in case we thoroughly screwed this thing up. So what can we do about this issue? Well, for starters, our greenhouse gas emissions are through the roof right now and need to come down. On an individual level, the greatest impact we can have is through our transportation. You should be making an effort to carpool every chance you get in order to save fuel. And on that note, the next time you buy a car, consider buying an all-electric vehicle. Because remember, every time you plug that thing in, that's one less tank of gas being burnt and sent into the atmosphere. With regards to introduced species, there's actually not much we can do to combat a species once it becomes invasive. So the most helpful thing we can do is not create problems in the first place. Whenever you travel to go hunting or fishing, make sure that you thoroughly clean your gear before coming home to avoid introducing a species into a new environment. Similarly, when you plant, only plant native species in your gardens. Also, if you do see an invasive species, the least you can do is report it. When it comes to overharvesting, I have a very simple solution for you that consists of three words. Follow the rules. It's that simple. For hunting and fishing, rules and regulations have been put in place regarding the type and amount of animals that can legally be killed. And trust me, these are not just arbitrary numbers that were randomly pulled out of a hat. Lots of statistical analysis goes into making these limits, so please obey them. Now listen, I could talk for hours on end about this issue because it's just that important. But far too often, when all is said and done, more is always said than done. So please act, do something, or the last and final species to go extinct will be us.